the journey to unite the Fae and foster understanding with humans had reached a critical juncture. The Meadow of Stars gathering had revealed both the potential for unity and the deep-seated fears and divisions within the Fae community. As Lena, Aiden, Moira, and their companions moved forward, they knew that the next phase would be the most challenging yet. Their new destination was the Ashen Peaks, a remote and rugged mountain range known for its harsh climate and treacherous terrain. It was said to be home to a group known as the Dark Fae, a faction of Fae who had distanced themselves from the broader Fae community. These Fae were often viewed with suspicion and fear due to their mastery of shadow magic and their association with ancient, forbidden practices. The decision to seek out the Dark Fae was not taken lightly. They were rumoured to be reclusive and distrustful of outsiders, especially those from more traditional Fae societies. However, Lena believed that engaging with them was crucial. The reawakening could not be truly inclusive without addressing the fears and misunderstandings surrounding the Dark Fae and finding a way to integrate them into the broader vision of unity. The journey to the Ashen Peaks was arduous, the landscape was stark and foreboding, with jagged cliffs and deep ravines. The air was thin and cold, and the ground was often covered in ash and soot, remnants of the volcanic activity that had shaped the region. As they ascended, the group encountered signs of life, strange, twisted plants and elusive creatures that watched them from the shadows. Upon reaching a high plateau, they found themselves at the entrance to a large, cavernous structure. The entrance was guarded by imposing stone statues, carved in the likeness of mythical beasts. The air around the statues crackled with magical energy, a clear sign that this place was protected by powerful wards. Lena stepped forward, her heart pounding with a mix of anticipation and anxiety. As the leader of the delegation, it was her responsibility to make contact and establish a dialogue. She raised her voice, calling out into the cavern, We come in peace seeking to speak with the Dark Fae. We are representatives of the Reawakening, and we wish to discuss the future of our people and our world. For a moment, there was silence, broken only by the faint rustling of wind and ash. Then, a figure emerged from the shadows, a tall, slender Fae with skin as pale as moonlight, and eyes that glowed with an eerie silver light. He was dressed in dark robes, and his presence was both ethereal and intimidating. I am Moros, the figure said his voice smooth and resonant, spokesman for the Dark Fae. You are brave to come here, seeking us out. Few have done so willingly. Lena met his gaze, her voice steady. We believe that all Fae, regardless of their practices or beliefs, have a place in the reawakening. We seek to understand and find common ground, to build a future where all Fae can coexist and thrive. Moros regarded her with an inscrutable expression. The Dark Fae have long been outcasts, feared and misunderstood by our own kind. Our magic, our ways, are different, and this difference has often led to conflict. Why should we trust that this time will be any different? Aiden stepped forward, his tone respectful. We understand that trust is earned, not given freely. We are here to listen, to learn, and to find ways to build that trust. The reawakening is not about erasing differences, but about finding strength in them. We believe that your knowledge and skills are invaluable, and we wish to include you in this vision. Morris was silent for a moment, his eyes scanning the group. You speak of unity and understanding, but are you prepared to face the truth of who we are, to accept the aspects of our magic and culture that others fear or reject? Moira, her voice gentle but firm, responded. We are here to understand, not to, O oh judge. Every form of magic has its place, and every fay has value. If we are to build a true community, we must be willing to embrace all aspects of our heritage, including those that are difficult or uncomfortable. Moro studied them for a long moment, then nodded. Very well. You may enter, but know that this is a place of shadows and secrets. What you see and hear may challenge your perceptions, but if you are truly committed to understanding, then you are welcome. The group followed Moros into the cavern, their surroundings dimly lit by glowing crystals embedded in the walls. The air was cool and damp, filled with the faint scent of minerals and earth. As they walked, they saw other dark fae, their appearances varied, but all sharing the same ethereal quality. Some watched them with curiosity, others with suspicion. 
The cavern opened into a large chamber, its ceiling high and covered in stalactites. The floor was marked with intricate patterns, and at the center stood a stone altar, surrounded by more of the glowing crystals. The chamber had a palpable sense of power, a place where ancient rituals had been performed. Moros gestured for them to sit on the stone benches around the altar. As they did, he began to speak, his voice echoing in the chamber. The Dark Fae have a long history, one intertwined with the very fabric of the Fae world. We are the keepers of knowledge that others have forgotten or rejected, the guardians of shadows and the mysteries they hold. Our magic is often misunderstood, seen as dangerous or forbidden, but it is a part of the natural order, just as light and life are. Lena listened intently, feeling the weight of Morris's words. We do not come to change or judge you. We seek to learn and to find ways to bridge the gap between our communities. The reawakening is an opportunity to redefine what it means to be Fey, to embrace all aspects of our identity. A murmur ran through the chamber, the dark Fey exchanging looks and whispers. Moros nodded thoughtfully. You speak with sincerity, but words alone are not enough. We need to see that you are willing to engage with our reality, to understand the depths of our magic and what it means to live in the shadows. He gestured to the altar, where a large, ornate mirror stood. Its surface was smooth and dark, reflecting nothing. This is the Mirror of Shadows, an ancient artifact that reveals the truth of one's soul. It shows not just what is, but what could be, the potential for both light and darkness within. Each of you must gaze into the mirror and face what you see. Only then can we continue this dialogue. Lena felt a shiver of apprehension, but nodded in agreement. We accept this challenge, with respect for your customs, and the understanding that this is a step toward building trust. One by one, the members of the delegation approached the mirror, each gazing into its depths. The air in the chamber seemed to thicken with tension as they confronted their reflections, each experience uniquely personal and profound. When Lena stepped forward, she felt a surge of energy as she looked into the mirror. The surface remained dark for a moment, then began to swirl with colors and shapes. She saw glimpses of herself in various forms, some familiar, others strange and unsettling. She saw her strengths and her flaws, her hopes and fears, and the potential paths her choices could lead to. The vision was overwhelming, but Lena held her gaze, absorbing the lessons it offered. She realized that the mirror was not just revealing her true self, but also the interconnectedness of all things the light and dark, the known and unknown, the accepted and the rejected. It was a powerful reminder of the complexity of the reawakening and the need to embrace all aspects of their journey. As the mirror's surface returned to its original darkness, Lena stepped back, feeling both drained and invigorated. The experience had been intense, but it had also deepened her understanding of herself and her mission. Moros watched them, his expression inscrutable. You have faced the mirror of shadows and seen the truths it reveals. This is a step toward understanding, but there is still much to discuss and many challenges to overcome. We will continue our dialogue, but know that trust must be built slowly and with care. The delegation nodded, feeling a mixture of relief and determination. They had passed the first test, but the road ahead was still uncertain. The Dark Fae were a crucial part of the reawakening, and integrating them into the broader Fey community would require patience, respect, and a willingness to confront uncomfortable truths. As they left the chamber, Lena felt a renewed sense of purpose. The encounter with the Dark Fey had been challenging, but enlightening. It underscored the importance of embracing the full spectrum of Fey identities and the need for inclusivity and understanding. The reawakening was a journey of discovery, not just of the world around them, but of themselves. It was about acknowledging and integrating the light and dark, the known and unknown, to create a future that was whole and inclusive. Lena knew that they still had a long way to go, but she felt more confident than ever in their mission. With each step, they were building a bridge toward unity, one that could withstand the challenges and complexities of their world. And Lena, as the catalyst, was determined to lead her people with courage, wisdom, and an unwavering commitment to a brighter, more inclusive future. The path was not easy, but it was one worth walking, for the sake of all Fae, 
and the world they sought to create. The delegation's encounter with the Dark Fae had been both enlightening and sobering. The experience with the Mirror of Shadows had left each member of the group reflective, contemplating the complexities and dualities within themselves and their mission. They realized that to move forward, they needed to engage deeply with the Dark Fae and address the underlying mistrust and fears. In the days that followed, Lena, Aiden, Moira, and the others stayed within the Ashen Peaks, continuing their dialogue with the Dark Fae. The discussions were challenging, often touching on sensitive topics and past grievances. The Dark Fae, led by Moros, were cautious and guarded, revealing that they had long felt marginalized and misunderstood by the broader Fae community. One evening, as they gathered around a dimly lit fire in a large cavern, Moros spoke candidly about the Dark Fae's history and their reasons for isolating themselves. Our magic has all been associated with shadows, with the unseen and the unknown. Many Fae fear what they do not understand, and over time, we became the scapegoats for anything considered dark or forbidden. Lena listened intently, understanding the pain in Moros's words. We acknowledge the wrongs of the past and the misunderstandings that have led to our current divisions, but we believe that the reawakening offers a chance to heal these wounds and to redefine our relationships. Moros nodded, though his expression remained guarded. Trust is not easily rebuilt. The Mirror of Shadows revealed much about your intentions, but intentions are not enough. We need tangible assurances that we will be accepted and that our practices will be respected. Aiden leaned forward, his tone earnest. What can we do to earn your trust? We are willing to make commitments that demonstrate our sincerity and our respect for your ways. Moros considered the question, then spoke with a hint of hesitation. There is a ritual, an ancient tradition among the Dark Fae. It is a pact of mutual understanding and protection, known as the Shadow's Covenant. By participating in this ritual, you would be committing to respecting our ways and ensuring our safety within the broader Fae community. Moira, sensing the significance of the proposal, asked gently, what does the ritual involve? We want to honor your traditions and understand fully what we are committing to. Moros explained, the Shadow's Covenant involves a symbolic exchange of shadows. It represents an acceptance of our nature and a pledge to protect each other from harm. It is not a binding oath, but it is a powerful gesture of solidarity and mutual respect. Lena exchanged glances with her companions, seeing the determination and willingness in their eyes. She turned back to Moros, her voice steady. We are willing to participate in the Shadow's Covenant. We understand the importance of this gesture, and we are committed to building a future where all Fae are respected and valued. Moros seemed to relax slightly, a faint smile touching his lips. Very well, we will prepare for the ritual, which will take place at the next moonrise. Be prepared to face the shadows within yourselves, as well as those within our community. This is a journey of mutual understanding, and it requires openness and courage. The following day was spent in quiet preparation. The atmosphere in the Ashen Peaks was tense yet hopeful, as both the delegation and the Dark Fae prepared for the ritual. The members of the delegation were given time to reflect on their experiences and to mentally prepare for the challenges of the ritual. As moonrise approached, they gathered in a large, open chamber deep within the mountain. The room was lit by the same glowing crystals that seemed to be a natural feature of the Ashen Peaks, casting a soft, ethereal light. At the center of the chamber, a large circle was drawn on the ground, marked with intricate symbols and surrounded by dark, flickering flames. Moros and several other dark fae stood around the circle, their expressions solemn. Lena, Aiden, Moira, and the rest of the delegation joined them, standing at the edge of the circle. Moros raised his hands, and the room fell silent. We gather here to perform the Shadow's Covenant, a ritual of trust and mutual respect. This is a commitment to honor and protect each other, recognizing the value of all forms of magic and the diversity of our Fae heritage. He gestured for the participants to step into the circle. As they did, the flames around them flickered and danced, casting long shadows on the walls. The atmosphere was thick with anticipation and a sense of gravity. Moros continued, his voice carrying a melodic resonance. Each of you will speak a truth about your own shadows. 
fears, doubts, or aspects of yourself that you find difficult to accept. By sharing these truths, you acknowledge the complexity of your own nature and the nature of others. This is a step toward understanding and embracing the full spectrum of fey identity. Lena felt a chill as she stepped forward, the first to speak. She looked around at the gathered fey, then took a deep breath. I fear that I am not strong enough to lead this reawakening, that I will fail in uniting our people and protecting them from harm. I struggle with the weight of this responsibility and the fear of making the wrong choices. As she spoke, her shadow seemed to ripple and shift, merging with the shadows of the other participants. There was a moment of silence, then Aiden stepped forward, his voice steady but filled with emotion. I fear losing control of my magic, of harming those I care about. The power we wield is a gift, but it is also a burden, and I worry that I am not worthy of it. Moira followed, her voice soft but clear. I struggle with guilt and shame from my family's past, from the actions of my ancestor that caused so much pain. I fear that I will never be able to make amends or escape that shadow. One by one, the participants spoke their truths, each revelation adding to the collective understanding and the shared experience of vulnerability. The shadows in the room seemed to dance and intertwine, a symbolic representation of the sea, he merging of their fears and doubts. Finally, Moros spoke, his voice calm and resonant. We all carry shadows within us, aspects of ourselves that we fear or reject. But these shadows are also a part of who we are, and by acknowledging them, we take the first step toward true understanding and acceptance. He reached out, touching the shadows on the ground. The flames around the circle flared briefly, then subsided, leaving a sense of calm and resolution in the chamber. The Shadow's Covenant is not just a ritual, it is a commitment to continue this journey of understanding and respect. We are bound by our shared experiences, and by this covenant, we pledge to protect and honor each other. As the ritual concluded, Lena felt a deep sense of connection and solidarity with the Dark Fae. The ritual had been a powerful experience, a moment of genuine vulnerability and mutual respect. She knew that this was just the beginning, that building trust and unity would require continued effort and dialogue. The following morning, as the delegation prepared to leave the Ashen Peaks, Moros approached them with a solemn expression. You have shown courage and sincerity in participating in the Shadow's Covenant. The Dark Fae will support the reawakening, but we will also hold you accountable to the promises made here. Trust must be maintained through actions, not just words. Lena nodded, understanding the weight of his words. We are committed to this path, Moros. Thank you for your openness and for sharing your traditions with us. We will honor this covenant and work to build a future where all Fae can live in harmony and mutual respect. As they departed, Lena felt a renewed sense of hope and determination. The encounter with the Dark Fae had been a significant step forward, a demonstration that even the most challenging divisions could be bridged with respect and understanding. The journey ahead was still fraught with challenges, but Lena felt more confident in their mission. The reawakening was not just about reclaiming magic, it was about creating a community that embraced the full spectrum of fey identity, including the shadows and the light. With each step, they were building a future where all fey, regardless of their differences, could coexist in harmony. And Lena, as the catalyst, was ready to lead her people toward that future, with unwavering commitment and a clear vision of unity and inclusion. Leaving the Ashen Peaks, Lena and her companions carried with them the weight of the Shadow's Covenant and the support of the Dark Fae. The journey had reached a new level of complexity, with each step bringing them closer to their goal, but also revealing the deep-seated divisions and challenges within the Fae community. Their next destination was the coastal city of Azure Bay, a vibrant hub where Fae and humans had coexisted more openly than in most places. This city was unique in its integration, with a long history of trade, cultural exchange, and even mixed communities. Lena believed that Azure Bay could serve as a model for the future they envisioned, a place where Fae and humans could live together in harmony. However, as they approached Azure Bay, it became clear that all was not well. The atmosphere was tense, with rumors of unrest and conflict between Fae and human residents. 
The streets, usually bustling with activity, were quieter than expected, and there was a palpable sense of unease in the air. The delegation was met by Serafina, a fey leader known for her diplomatic skills and her role in maintaining the fragile peace in Azure Bay. Her expression was grave as she greeted them, her eyes reflecting a deep concern. Welcome to Azure Bay, Serafina said, her voice calm but with an undercurrent of tension. We are grateful for your visit, but I must warn you, things are not as they once were. There have been increasing tensions between the fey and human communities, fueled by fear and misunderstanding. The recent talks of the reawakening have only heightened these fears. Lena listened, her heart heavy with concern. We were hoping to learn from Azure Bay's example, to see how Fey and humans can coexist peacefully. What has changed? Serafina sighed, leading them through the streets toward a large meeting hall. The integration here has always been delicate, dependent on mutual respect and cooperation. However, recent incidents, disappearances, property damage, and strange occurrences have been blamed on the Fey, exacerbating old fears. Some believe these events are related to the reawakening, fearing that it will bring about a resurgence of powerful and uncontrolled magic. Inside the meeting hall, they found a diverse group of fey and humans, their faces reflecting a mix of hope, fear, and suspicion. The room was filled with the hum of quiet conversation, which fell silent as Lena and her companions entered. Serafina introduced the delegation and invited Lena to speak. She stepped forward, feeling the weight of the eyes upon her, and began to address the assembly. We are here to promote understanding and cooperation, to find ways to build a future where Fey and humans can coexist in peace. We understand that recent events have caused fear and concern, but we believe that open dialogue and mutual respect can help us overcome these challenges. A human representative, a middle-aged man named Marcus, stood up, his expression wary but open. Many in our community are afraid, not because we hate the Fey, but because we don't understand. There are stories of powerful fey magic, and we fear what we don't know. Can you assure us that this reawakening won't lead to chaos or danger? Lena nodded, her voice steady. The reawakening is about reconnecting with our heritage and magic, but it is also about responsibility. We are committed to ensuring that our magic is used for the greater good, not harm. We want to work with the human community to educate and build trust. Another voice, this time from a young fae named Lyra, spoke with a hint of frustration. But what about the incidents? People are afraid because strange things are happening. Disappearances, unexplained phenomena. How do we know these aren't signs of something dangerous? Moira, sensing the fear and urgency in Lyra's voice, responded with empathy. We need to investigate these incidents thoroughly to understand what's happening. Fear often arises from the unknown and the best way to address it is through knowledge and transparency. We can work together to find the truth and ensure the safety of everyone in Azure Bay. The room buzzed with murmurs, the tension palpable. It was clear that both Fey and humans were struggling with uncertainty and fear, unsure of what the reawakening might bring. Lena realized that to make progress, they needed to address these fears directly and show tangible commitment to the safety and well-being of all residents. Serafina suggested forming a joint task force of Fey and humans to investigate the incidents and work on community outreach and education. The idea was met with cautious agreement, as both sides recognized the need for action and cooperation. The next few days were spent setting up the task force and beginning the investigation into the recent incidents. Lena, Aidan and Moira took an active role, working alongside local leaders and residents. They visited affected areas, spoke with witnesses, and began to gather data. As they delved deeper, they uncovered a troubling pattern. The incidents were not random. They appeared to be orchestrated, aimed at sowing fear and discord. There were signs of dark magic, subtle but unmistakable, suggesting that someone was deliberately trying to disrupt the fragile peace in Azure Bay. One evening, as they reviewed their findings, Aidan spoke up, his expression thoughtful. It seems clear that someone is using magic to manipulate events and stir up fear. But who would benefit from this chaos? And why target Azure Bay, a place known for its cooperation and integration? Serafina nodded, her brow furrowed. 
There are factions within both the Fey and human communities who oppose integration, who see the reawakening as a threat to the old order. It's possible that this is an attempt to sabotage our efforts, to prove that Fey and humans cannot coexist peacefully. Lena felt a chill at the thought. We need to find out who is behind this and stop them. If we allow fear and division to take root, it could unravel everything we've worked for. The task force intensified its efforts, focusing on tracking the sources of the dark magic and identifying those involved. The investigation was painstaking, requiring both magical expertise and community cooperation. They began to make progress, uncovering clues and narrowing down suspects. As tensions in Azure Bay continued to rise, Lena knew that they were racing against time. The community was at a tipping point, and any further incidents could lead to open conflict. She and her companions worked tirelessly, knowing that the outcome of this situation could have far-reaching implications for the reawakening and the future of fey human relations. In the midst of the investigation, Lena received a message from Moros and the Dark Fey, offering their assistance. The Dark Fey's expertise in shadow magic and their understanding of manipulation and concealment could prove invaluable in identifying the culprits. Lena gratefully accepted their offer, seeing it as a positive step toward deeper integration and cooperation. The combined efforts of the task force and the Dark Fey began to yield results. They discovered that a small group of rogue Fey, opposed to the reawakening and fearful of human encroachment, had been using their magic to create chaos and instability. These Fey believed that by disrupting the integration efforts, they could protect their way of life and prevent further exposure to the human world. The revelation was a bittersweet moment for Lena and her team. While they were relieved to have identified the source of the disturbances, it was disheartening to realize that the threat came from within their own ranks. It highlighted the deep divisions and fears that still existed within the Fey community. With the information in hand, the task force moved quickly to neutralize the threat. They confronted the rogue Fey, offering them a chance to cease their activities and engage in dialogue. The confrontation was tense, but ultimately, the rogue Fey agreed to stop their actions and discuss their concerns with the broader community. The resolution of the crisis in Azure Bay was a significant victory, but it also underscored the challenges that lay ahead. The incident had exposed the fragility of the peace between Fey and humans, and the underlying fears and suspicions that could easily be exploited. As Lena and her companions prepared to leave Azure Bay, they reflected on the lessons learned. The reawakening was not just about reclaiming magic or building unity, it was about addressing deep-seated fears and divisions, both within the Fey community and between Fey and humans. It required constant vigilance, open communication, and a commitment to understanding and cooperation. The journey continued, with new challenges and opportunities on the horizon. Lena felt a renewed sense of purpose and determination, knowing that the road ahead would be difficult, but also filled with potential. The vision of a united world, where Fey and humans could coexist peacefully, was still within reach. And Lena, as the catalyst, was ready to lead her people forward, guided by hope, wisdom, and an unwavering commitment to a future where all could thrive together. The reawakening was a journey of transformation, and they were only just beginning to understand its true scope and significance. The Ra, a solution of the crisis in Azure Bay had brought a temporary peace, but it also underscored the complexities and challenges of the reawakening. Lena and her companions were acutely aware that while they had addressed one immediate threat, the underlying issues of mistrust, fear, and opposition remained potent forces within the Fey community. As they journeyed away from Azure Bay, Lena received a summons from the Hidden Council. The council members had been closely monitoring the events and were concerned about the escalating tensions and the emerging factions opposed to the reawakening. They requested a meeting with Lena and her team to discuss the next steps and to strategize on how to maintain momentum while addressing the growing concerns. The Hidden Council's location was secretive, accessible only through hidden pathways and guarded by ancient wards. As the delegation approached the Council's meeting place, Lena felt a sense of gravity and anticipation. The Council represented a crucial nexus of wisdom and authority within the Fey world, 
and their support was vital for the reawakening to succeed. Upon arrival, they were greeted by Lysandra, the Speaker of the Council, and escorted into a grand hall carved into the mountainside. The hall was vast and awe-inspiring, filled with intricate carvings, ancient tapestries, and glowing crystals that illuminated the space with a soft, ambient light. The council members, each representing different aspects of Fey society and magic, were seated in a semicircle, their expressions serious and contemplative. Lysandra gestured for Lena and her team to sit at the center of the hall, where all eyes were upon them. Lysandra began the meeting with a measured tone. We have been following the developments closely, particularly the situation in Azure Bay. Your efforts to resolve the crisis were commendable, and we acknowledge the complexity of the challenges you face. However, it is clear that the reawakening is entering a more contentious phase. Opposition is growing, and we must consider our next steps carefully. One of the council members, a fey elder named Orin, with hair like silver threads and eyes that seemed to pierce through time, spoke up. The incidents in Azure Bay reveal a deeper issue. There are Fae who fear the reawakening, who believe it threatens our way of life and our safety. This fear is being exploited by those who wish to maintain the status quo or who are wary of greater integration with humans. Lena nodded, acknowledging the truth in Orin's words. We encountered significant resistance, and it's clear that there are deep-seated fears and concerns. Some Fey worry that the reawakening will lead to loss of cultural identity or increased conflict with humans. We need to address these fears directly and find ways to reassure our community. Another council member, a Fey known as Thalia, who was an expert in Fey history and law, added, there is also a question of leadership and vision. The reawakening needs clear goals and assurances that it will not lead to unintended consequences. We must communicate that this is a carefully considered process, one that respects our traditions while embracing the future. Aidan spoke up, his voice thoughtful. We've been focused on building alliances and addressing immediate crises, but we haven't yet articulated a comprehensive vision or plan for the reawakening. We need to define what we mean by reawakening what it entails, how it will be achieved, and what safeguards will be in place to protect our community. Moira agreed, her tone compassionate. We also need to involve more voices in this process. The Fey community is diverse, and we need to ensure that all perspectives are considered, especially those who feel marginalized or threatened by these changes. This is not just about convincing people to support the reawakening, it's about genuinely engaging with their concerns and finding solutions together. Ah. Uh, Lysandra nodded, her expression grave but hopeful. Your insights are valuable, and they underscore the importance of this moment. The Council is prepared to support the reawakening, but we must do so with a clear and unified approach. We propose forming a broader assembly, bringing together representatives from various Fey communities, including those who are skeptical or opposed. This assembly would work to develop a shared vision and a strategic plan for the reawakening. Lena felt a surge of relief and gratitude. We would welcome that support. A broader assembly could help us gain a more comprehensive understanding of the issues and build a more inclusive and cohesive movement. Orin, the elder, raised a critical point. There is also the matter of external threats. The incidents in Azure Bay suggest that there are forces actively working against the reawakening. We must be vigilant and prepared to defend ourselves against those who would exploit our divisions for their own ends. The Council discussed the need for enhanced security measures and intelligence gathering to identify and counteract any external threats. They also emphasized the importance of transparency and communication, both within the Fey community and with humans, to prevent misinformation and fear from spreading. As the meeting drew to a close, the council members expressed their support for the reawakening and their commitment to working collaboratively to address the challenges ahead. They scheduled a follow-up meeting to begin organizing the broader assembly and to discuss the specific steps needed to develop a strategic plan. As Lena and her team left the hidden council, they felt a renewed sense of purpose and determination. The path forward was becoming clearer but they also understood that the road would be fraught with challenges and uncertainties. 
The reawakening was not just about restoring magic or uniting the Fae. It was about navigating a complex web of cultural, social, and political dynamics. Back at their camp, Lena and her companions discussed the day's events. The meeting with the council had provided much-needed clarity and direction, but it also highlighted the immense responsibility they carried. They needed to articulate a vision that was both inspiring and practical, one that addressed the concerns of their community while pushing toward a more inclusive and harmonious future. Aidan, reflecting on the discussions, remarked, we have a unique opportunity here, not just to preserve our heritage, but to transform it in a way that can adapt to the changing world. The reawakening can be a force for positive change, but we need to be mindful of the fears and resistances that come with any transformative process. Moira added, We also need to ensure that our leadership is inclusive and representative. The broader assembly is a good start, but we must make a concerted effort to reach out to those who feel unheard or excluded. This isn't just about gaining support, it's about building a community where everyone feels they have a stake in the future. Lena agreed, her mind already racing with ideas and plans. We need to be transparent and communicative, sharing our goals and the steps we're taking to achieve them. This will help build trust and dispel some of the fears and uncertainties. We also need to set clear expectations about what the reawakening will and will not do. This is a collective journey, and we must ensure that everyone understands and feels included in the process. As they prepared for the upcoming assembly, Lena felt the weight of their mission more acutely than ever. The reawakening was a monumental task, one that required not just magical prowess, but also empathy, diplomacy, and strategic thinking. It was a journey that would test their resolve, their leadership, and their commitment to the vision of a united and harmonious Fey world. The path was uncertain, but Lena knew that they were not alone. With the support of the Hidden Council, the broader Fey community, and the growing number of allies, they had a chance to create something truly transformative. The vision of a united world, where Fey and humans could coexist peacefully and with mutual respect, was within reach and Lena, as the catalyst, was ready to lead her people toward that future, guided by wisdom, courage, and an unwavering commitment to their shared destiny. The reawakening was not just a journey of magic, it was a journey of heart and spirit, a testament to the enduring power of hope and unity. The Hidden Council's proposal to form a broader assembly brought a new sense of urgency and purpose to Lena and her companions. The assembly was envisioned as a gathering of Fey representatives from diverse backgrounds and perspectives, aimed at creating a cohesive and inclusive vision for the reawakening. It was to be a place where concerns could be aired, solutions debated, and a unified path forward charted. Preparations for the assembly were intense and involved meticulous planning. Invitations were sent out to various Fey communities including those who had been hesitant or outright opposed to the reawakening. The location chosen for the assembly was a vast, ancient amphitheater known as the Echoing Stones, situated in a secluded valley known for its natural beauty and historical significance. As the date of the assembly approached, there was a palpable sense of anticipation and tension. This was a critical moment in the reawakening, an opportunity to build bridges and forge a shared vision, but it also carried the risk of exacerbating divisions, if not handled carefully. The Echoing Stones, named for their unique acoustics, was a natural amphitheater surrounded by towering cliffs and ancient trees. The amphitheater's stones, arranged in concentric circles, had been used for centuries as a gathering place for significant fey events. It was a site steeped in history, a fitting venue for a meeting of such importance. As Lena and her companions arrived at the amphitheatre, they were greeted by a diverse assembly of Fae. There were representatives from the Sylvan clan, known for their deep connection to nature, the Luminaris, who were skilled in light and celestial magic, the Veilwalkers from the Shadow's Edge, and even members of the Dark Fae, led by Moros. There were also many independent Fae, as well as those who had long lived in isolation or small, secretive communities. The atmosphere was charged with a mix of curiosity, hope, and wariness. It was clear that many had come with reservations, unsure of what to expect or what would be asked of them. Lena, 
standing with Aidan, Moira, and the other key figures of the reawakening movement, felt the weight of the moment. As the appointed speaker, she stepped forward to address the assembly, her voice steady and clear, amplified by the natural acoustics of the echoing stones. Welcome, everyone, to this historic gathering, Lena began, her gaze sweeping across the diverse assembly. We are here today because we believe in the possibility of a united Fey world, one that respects our differences and embraces our shared heritage. The reawakening is not just about reclaiming our magic, it is about reimagining our future together. There was a murmur of response from the crowd, a mix of approval and skepticism. Lena continued, addressing the concerns directly. We know there are fears and uncertainties. Some worry that the reawakening will lead to conflict or loss of identity. Others fear exposure to the human world and the potential consequences. These are valid concerns, and they deserve our full attention and respect. She paused, allowing her words to resonate. This assembly is a place for open dialogue and honest discussion. We are not here to impose a single vision, but to co-create a future that honors all Fae. We invite you to share your perspectives, why, our concerns, and your hopes. Together, we can find a path forward that reflects our collective wisdom and strength. The floor was opened for discussion, and representatives began to speak. The conversations were frank and sometimes heated, reflecting the diversity of experiences and viewpoints within the Fae community. There were passionate arguments about the risks of engaging with humans, the importance of preserving traditional practices, and the need for a clear and inclusive governance structure for the reawakening. Moros, representing the Dark Fae, spoke about the need for mutual respect and the acknowledgement of all forms of magic, including those that had been marginalized or misunderstood. We must not shy away from the shadows within us, he said, his voice carrying a calm authority. Embracing all aspects of our nature is crucial for true unity and understanding. A representative from the Luminaris clan, known as Selene, emphasized the importance of transparency and education in dealing with humans. Fear often comes from ignorance, she said. We need to be proactive in educating both our community and the human world about who we are and what we stand for. Thalios, the leader of the Sylvan clan, raised concerns about the environmental impact of the reawakening, particularly the potential strain on natural resources as fey magic became more widespread. We have a responsibility to protect the natural world, he argued. Our magic is deeply connected to the earth, and we must use it wisely. As the discussions progressed, it became clear that while there were significant differences, there was also a shared desire for peace, understanding, and a sustainable future. The assembly's atmosphere began to shift from one of tension to one of collaborative problem-solving. Lena and her team facilitated the discussions, ensuring that all voices were heard and that key concerns were addressed. They proposed the creation of working groups to tackle specific issues, such as security, environmental stewardship, cultural preservation, and human relations. These groups would include representatives from various Fey factions, tasked with developing concrete proposals and strategies. Aidan suggested the formation of a central council to oversee the reawakening process, ensuring coordination and accountability. This council would be composed of elected representatives from different Fey communities, with a mandate to act in the collective interest of all Fey. Moira emphasized the need for ongoing communication and engagement, proposing regular assemblies and forums where Fey could voice their concerns and participate in decision-making. This is an evolving process, she said. We need to be flexible and responsive, learning from each other and adapting as we go. As the assembly drew to a close, there was a palpable sense of accomplishment and hope. While many challenges remained, the gathering had been a crucial step in building a more cohesive and inclusive Fey community. The agreements reached and the structures proposed provided a framework for moving forward, one that balanced the need for unity with respect for diversity. Lena felt a deep sense of gratitude and responsibility. The assembly had been a success, but it was just the beginning. The reawakening was a long and complex journey, requiring sustained effort, dialogue and collaboration. There would be setbacks and conflicts, but there was also a growing sense of possibility and shared purpose. 
as the Fae began to disperse, returning to their communities with new ideas and commitments, Lena and her companions stayed behind to debrief and plan the next steps. They knew that the road ahead would be challenging, but they also felt more prepared and supported than ever. The vision of a united Fey world, where all could live in harmony and mutual respect, was becoming more tangible. The reawakening was not just a revival of magic, it was a reimagining of what it meant to be Fey, a collective journey toward a brighter, more inclusive future. And Lena, as the catalyst, was ready to continue leading this journey, guided by hope, wisdom, and an unwavering commitment to unity. The challenges were great, but so too was the potential for transformation and renewal. The assembly had been a milestone, but the work of the reawakening was far from over. Together they would forge a path forward, one step at a time, toward a future where all Fey could thrive. The assembly of Fey at the Echoing Stones had been a pivotal moment in the reawakening, fostering a spirit of cooperation and setting a course for a unified future. However, as Lena and her companions continued their efforts, they soon realized that the path ahead was fraught with complexities and emerging tensions. After the assembly, the working groups and the Central Council began their tasks, delving into the various aspects of the reawakening, security, environmental stewardship, cultural preservation, and human relations. These groups, composed of representatives from diverse Fey factions, were intended to create a balanced, an inclusive approach to the challenges facing their community. Yet, beneath the surface of this progress, seeds of discord were beginning to sprout. Some Fey, particularly those from more traditional or isolationist backgrounds, felt uneasy about the rapid changes and the integration of differing magical practices and cultural values. Others, influenced by the fear of human encroachment or historical grievances, questioned the wisdom of such openness and collaboration. These undercurrents of doubt and resistance came to a head in the form of anonymous messages and symbols appearing in various Fey communities, suggesting that the reawakening was a threat to traditional Fey ways and warning against too much integration with humans. These messages stirred unease, amplifying existing fears and mistrust. Lena and her team, aware of these developments, recognized the need to address these concerns directly. They decided to visit several key Fey communities to engage in dialogue, listen to the concerns, and reassure their fellow Fey that the reawakening was not a loss of identity, but an evolution toward a more inclusive and resilient future. Their first stop was the community of Silverleaf, known for its ancient traditions and strong sense of identity. Silverleaf had been relatively quiet during the assembly, and Lena suspected that there was a degree of hesitation about the changes being proposed. Upon arrival, they were greeted warmly, but with a noticeable formality. The leader of Silverleaf, a venerable fae named Eldrin, welcomed them into a large, ornately decorated hall. Eldrin, with his long silver hair and penetrating gaze, was a respected figure, known for his wisdom and deep knowledge of fae lore. As they sat in a circle, Lena spoke first, expressing gratitude for the opportunity to visit and discuss the future. She acknowledged the concerns that had been raised and emphasized that the reawakening was a collective journey, one that sought to honor all Fey traditions and cultures. Eldrin listened carefully, then spoke with measured words. Silverleaf has always valued its heritage and autonomy. We are a community deeply rooted in our traditions and there is a concern that the reawakening might lead to a dilution of our cultural identity. There are also fears that our ways, particularly our practices and customs, might be overshadowed or misunderstood in the broader integration process. Lena nodded, understanding the gravity of his concerns. The reawakening is not about erasing our differences or imposing a single vision. It's about creating a space where all Fey traditions are respected and where diversity is seen as a strength. We want to learn from each other and ensure that each community's unique contributions are valued and preserved. Aiden A. Dedded. We are aware of the symbols and messages that have been appearing. We suspect they are the work of those who wish to sow discord and fear, possibly to prevent the reawakening from succeeding. It's crucial that we confront these challenges together through open dialogue and mutual understanding. The discussion continued, with Eldrin and other Silverleaf leaders expressing their views and concerns. 
There was a clear sense of pride in their community's history and achievements, but also an underlying fear of losing control over their destiny. Mora, with her characteristic empathy, spoke gently but firmly. We understand the desire to protect what is cherished, but we must also recognize that isolation can lead to misunderstanding and division. The reawakening is an opportunity to build bridges, to create a future where we are stronger together, while still honoring our roots. After the meeting, Lena and her team sensed a cautious willingness from Silverleaf's leaders to engage more deeply with the reawakening process. They agreed to participate in cultural exchange programs and to contribute to the working groups, particularly those focused on cultural preservation and education. As they left Silverleaf, Lena felt a mixture of hope and concern. The visit had been productive, but it was clear that the road ahead would require careful navigation of sensitive issues. The fear of loss of identity and the influence of fear-mongering elements were significant challenges. Their next visit was to the community of Stormreach, known for its warriors and its strategic location along key trade routes. Stormreach had a reputation for being fiercely independent and protective of its autonomy, with a deep-seated wariness of external influence. Upon arrival, they were met with a more guarded reception. The leader of Stormreach, a stern and imposing figure named Thorn, was less welcoming and more skeptical than Eldrin. In a small, fortified hall, Thorn spoke bluntly about his community's concerns. We have heard much about the benefits of the reawakening, Thorn said, his voice deep and resonant. But we also know the dangers of opening ourselves up. Our history is one of defending our way of life from threats, both internal and external. There are those in Stormreach who fear that this reawakening will make us vulnerable, that it will invite conflict and undermine our strength. Lena responded with understanding and resolve. Your concerns are valid, Thorn. The reawakening is not without risks, but it also offers opportunities for greater strength and unity. We are not advocating for abandoning caution, but rather for finding a balance where we can protect ourselves while also building connections that enhance our resilience. The discussions in Stormreach were intense, reflecting the community's deep-seated fears and suspicions. However, Lena and her team were able to present a compelling case for why integration and cooperation were essential for long-term security and prosperity. They emphasized that unity did not mean uniformity and that strength could be found in diversity. After several days of meetings and discussions, the Stormreach leaders agreed to consider participating in the broader FEI initiatives, particularly those focused on security and strategic planning. It was a tentative step, but an important one. As they continued their journey, Lena and her team reflected on the challenges they faced. The fears and resistances they encountered were rooted in genuine concerns and historical experiences. Addressing these fears required more than just dialogue. It required building trust, demonstrating commitment, and delivering tangible benefits. They also recognized the need to counteract the negative messages and symbols that were being used to undermine the reawakening. This would involve a concerted effort to promote positive narratives, to highlight the successes and potential of the Gaed reawakening, and to reassure the Fey community that their identities and traditions would be respected and preserved. The road ahead was daunting, but Lena felt more determined than ever. The reawakening was a monumental undertaking, requiring patience, perseverance, and a deep commitment to inclusivity and respect. The seeds of discord were real and challenging, but they could be countered with the seeds of understanding and unity. As they prepared for their next steps, Lena knew that the success of the reawakening depended on their ability to navigate these complexities, to engage with their fellow Fae with empathy and honesty, and to build a future where all could find their place. The vision of a united Fae world, living in harmony and mutual respect, was still within reach, and Lena, as the catalyst, was ready to continue leading this journey, guided by hope, wisdom, and an unwavering commitment to a future where all Fae could thrive. The delegation's journey through various Fae communities revealed both the potential and the challenges of the reawakening. While some communities, like Silverleaf and Stormreach, were cautiously open to engaging with the process, the underlying fears and suspicions made it clear 
that the path to unity was far from smooth. As Lena, Aidan, Moira and their companions travelled, they noticed a growing undercurrent of unease. Rumours began to circulate of a shadowy faction that opposed the reawakening, not just through words but through covert actions designed to sow discord and fear. These rumours spoke of mysterious figures, unseen saboteurs who manipulated events from the shadows, exploiting fears and stoking divisions. The situation came to a head when they received an urgent message from the Hidden Council. The Council had detected a series of magical disturbances linked to these shadowy figures, suggesting a coordinated effort to undermine the reawakening. The message urged Lena and her team to investigate these disturbances and, if possible, to confront the forces behind them. The trail led them to a secluded forest known as the Gloomwood, a place reputed to be haunted and avoided by most Fey. The forest had a dark history, associated with lost travellers and unexplained phenomena. It was the kind of place where secrets could be hidden, and where those wishing to remain unseen could thrive. As they entered the Gloomwood, the atmosphere grew oppressive, the air thick with mist and the scent of damp earth. The forest was eerily quiet, the usual sounds of wildlife strangely absent. Lena felt a chill, not just from the cool air, but from the palpable sense of unease that permeated the place. They proceeded cautiously, aware that they were stepping into potentially dangerous territory. Aiden, his senses attuned to magical energies, led the way, guiding them toward the source of the disturbances. As they ventured deeper into the forest, they encountered signs of recent activity, broken branches, disturbed soil, and faint traces of magical residue. It wasn't long before they stumbled upon a clearing where several figures were gathered around a makeshift altar. The figures were cloaked, their faces hidden, and they exuded an aura of dark magic. The altar itself was adorned with symbols and artifacts that Lena recognized as being associated with shadow magic and manipulation. Moros, who had joined them for this investigation, stepped forward, his expression serious. These are shadow practitioners, adept at using magic to influence thoughts and emotions. They are often feared for their ability to sow discord and confusion. One of the cloaked figures sensing their presence turned toward them and the air crackled with tension. The figure's voice was cold and mocking. Ah, the champions of the reawakening, what brings you to our humble abode? Lena stood firm, her voice steady. We seek answers. There are those who spread fear and division, opposing the reawaken, in and the unity it seeks to build. Are you responsible for the disturbances in the Fey communities? The figure laughed a harsh and mirthless laugh. Responsible, perhaps, but we are not the cause, only the catalyst. The fears and divisions you see are not our doing, they have always been there, beneath the surface. We merely bring them to light. Lena felt a surge of anger but kept her composure. Exploiting fears for your own ends is dangerous and irresponsible. The reawakening is about healing and unity, not manipulation and control. The figure shrugged, the gesture barely visible beneath the cloak. Unity? Healing? These are comforting words, but naive. The Fey are not united, and they never will be. There are too many differences, too much history. Our actions merely reveal the truth. There is no future where all Fey stand together. Moro stepped forward, his voice filled with quiet authority. Your actions are divisive and harmful. The reawakening is an opportunity for growth and reconciliation, but it requires honesty and trust. What you are doing undermines that effort and puts all Fey at risk. Another figure spoke, their tone softer but equally resolute. We do what we must to protect our ways, our identities. The reawakening threatens to homogenize the Fey, to erase what makes each community unique. We offer an alternative, a path where Fey can remain true to themselves without being forced into a false unity. Lena felt the weight of their words, understanding that these fears were deeply felt by some. She spoke earnestly, hoping to reach them. The reawakening is not about erasing differences, it's about celebrating them. We can be united without being the same. Our diversity is our strength, and we can find ways to honour and protect all Fey traditions and identities. The first figure shook their head, their voice tinged with a mix of regret and defiance. You speak as if you understand, but you do not. The reawakening threatens the balance of power, the established ways. There will always be those who resist, 
who see your vision as a threat rather than a promise. The atmosphere grew more tense, the air thick with unspoken threats. Lena realized that this confrontation could escalate into something dangerous. She signaled to her companions to prepare for the possibility of a conflict. Before Tens could boil over, the forest around them seemed to react, as if the gloomwood itself was aware of the confrontation. A sudden gust of wind swirled through the clearing, extinguishing the candles on the altar and scattering the symbols and artifacts. The cloaked figures seemed startled, looking around as if sensing something unseen. In the confusion, one of them stepped forward, revealing a pale face with eyes that glowed faintly in the dim light. This place is not safe for either of us. The gloomwood is restless, and it does not favor conflict. Taking advantage of the momentary distraction, Lena spoke again, her voice calm but firm. We do not seek to harm you, nor do we wish to force you into anything but we cannot allow actions that undermine the safety and unity of our people. There is still a chance to talk, to find a path forward that respects all perspectives. The figure seemed to hesitate, then nodded slowly. Perhaps, there is more to discuss, but not here, and not now. The Gloomwood is a place of secrets, and it does not take kindly to outsiders. With that, the figures retreated into the shadows, their presence fading as if they were part of the forest itself. Lena and her companions were left standing in the clearing, the tension slowly dissipating. Moros turned to Lena, his expression thoughtful. They are not entirely wrong, you know. The fears they express are real, and they are shared by many. But their methods are dangerous, and their vision is one of division rather than unity. Lena nodded, feeling the weight of the encounter. We need to address these fears openly and honestly. We can't ignore them or hope they will go away. The reawakening is about healing, but healing can only begin when we acknowledge the wounds. Aiden, his face tense with concern, added, We also need to be vigilant. There are forces at play here that we do not fully understand. The Gloomwood's reaction suggests that there are deeper currents of magic and intent. We must tread carefully. As they left the Gloomwood, Lena felt a renewed sense of urgency. The encounter had shown her that the path to unity was fraught with challenges both internal and external. There were those who feared the reawakening and those who sought to exploit these fears for their own ends. The journey ahead was daunting, but Lena knew that they could not turn back. The vision of a united Fey world, where diversity was celebrated and all could thrive, was still within reach. But it would require courage, patience, and a willingness to confront difficult truths. As the catalyst, Lena felt the weight of her role more acutely than ever. She was determined to lead her people with integrity and compassion, guided by a vision of hope and unity. The shadows of doubt were real, but so too was the potential for a brighter future. Together, they would continue to forge a path forward, one that honored the past while embracing the possibilities of the future. The reawakening was a journey of transformation, and they were just beginning to understand its true scope and significance. The encounter in the Gloomwood had left Lena and her companions deeply unsettled. The shadowy figures had articulated fears and doubts that were not only their own, but echoed the anxieties of many Fey across the land. The realization that there were those actively working to undermine the reawakening added a new layer of urgency and complexity to their mission. Upon returning to the Hidden Council, Lena reported the encounter in detail. The council members listened intently, their expressions grave. The presence of a faction willing to use shadow magic and manipulation to stoke divisions within the Fey community was a serious threat, one that required immediate and decisive action. Lysandra, the speaker of the council, called an emergency session to discuss the implications of these revelations and to decide on a course of action. The hall was filled with representatives from various Fey factions all of whom were acutely aware of the growing tensions and the potential for conflict. The session opened with Lysandra summarizing the situation. The reawakening is at a critical juncture. While many support our efforts to unite the Fae and engage with the broader world, there are those who oppose these changes, seeing them as a threat to our traditions and security. Recent events in the Gloomwood have confirmed that there are elements actively working to sow discord and fear.
Orin, the elder with his penetrating gaze, spoke next. We cannot ignore this threat. The use of shadow magic to manipulate and deceive is a serious concern. It undermines trust and could destabilize our community. We must act swiftly to identify those responsible and mitigate the damage they have caused. Thalia, the historian, added, The fears they exploit are not unfounded. There are genuine concerns about the pace of change and the integration with humans. We need to address these fears head-on, providing reassurances and demonstrating that the reawakening can honour and protect our diverse traditions. The Council debated various strategies, from increased security measures to more extensive community engagement. There was a consensus that transparency and communication were crucial, as was the need to build trust among the Fae and with human communities. Lena, feeling the weight of responsibility, spoke up. We need to find a balance between vigilance and openness. The reawakening must continue to be a process that includes all voices, evs, and those who are skeptical or afraid. But we also need to ensure that those who would manipulate and harm us are stopped. Aiden suggested forming a specialized task force composed of fae skilled in various forms of magic, including those who could counteract shadow magic. This task force would be tasked with investigating and neutralizing the shadowy elements that sought to disrupt the reawakening. Moira emphasized the importance of outreach and education. We must continue to engage with our communities, especially those who feel marginalized or left behind. Education and dialogue are our best tools for dispelling fear and building a shared understanding. After lengthy deliberations, the council reached a consensus. They issued an edict outlining a series of actions to be taken. Formation of the Shadow Task Force. A specialized group would be established to investigate and counteract the activities of the shadowy faction. This task force would work discreetly to protect the Fae community and uphold the values of the reawakening. Increased community engagement. The Council would initiate a series of community forums and dialogues, aiming to address concerns, provide information, and build trust. These forums would be open to all Fae, encouraging participation and transparency. Enhanced security measures. In light of the potential threats, the Council called for enhanced security around key locations and events related to the reawakening. This included the protection of leaders and representatives involved in the process. Continued collaboration with human communities. Recognizing the importance of fostering positive relationships with humans, the Council encouraged continued dialogue and collaboration. This included educational initiatives to dispel myths and promote mutual understanding. Monitoring and reporting. The Council called on all Fae to remain vigilant and to report any suspicious activities or disturbances. This collective vigilance was seen as crucial in maintaining the safety and integrity of the reawakening. The edict was met with general approval, though it was clear that implementing these measures would require effort and coordination. There was a palpable sense of resolve among the council members and the assembled representatives. The stakes were high, but there was also a shared commitment to the vision of a united Fae community. As the session concluded, Lysandra addressed the assembly with a call to action. We stand at a crossroads. The path we choose now will shape our future. Let us move forward with courage, wisdom, and a commitment to our shared values. The reawakening is not just a journey of magic, but a journey of heart and spirit. Together, we can overcome these challenges and build a future where all Fae can thrive. Lena and her companions left the council meeting with a renewed sense of purpose. The challenges they faced were daunting, but they were not insurmountable. The reawakening had always been about more than just reclaiming magic. It was about building a community where all Fae could find their place. The formation of the Shadow Task Force was a critical step in addressing the immediate threats. Lena knew that this group would need to operate with discretion and sensitivity, balancing the need for security with the broader goals of the reawakening. The increased community engagement and outreach efforts were equally crucial. Building trust and dispelling fear required ongoing dialogue and a willingness to listen. Lena and her team committed to redoubling their efforts in this area, recognizing that education and communication were key to fostering a sense of unity and shared purpose. 
As they prepared for the next phase of their journey, Lena felt the weight of their mission more acutely than ever. The reawakening was a process of transformation, one that required not only magic, but also empathy, resilience, and a deep commitment to the ideals of inclusivity and respect. The shadows of doubt and division were real, but so too was the potential for healing and renewal. Lena, as the catalyst, was determined to lead her people through this challenging time, guided by a vision of hope and unity. The path ahead was uncertain, but the destination, a world where all Fae could thrive together, was worth every effort. Together, they would continue to forge a path forward, one step at a time, toward a future where diversity was celebrated and all voices were heard. The reawakening was a journey of discovery and growth, and they were committed to seeing it through, no matter the challenges that lay ahead. The Hidden Council's edict marked a turning point in the reawakening, setting the stage for more coordinated and decisive actions. Among the key initiatives was the formation of the Shadow Task Force, a specialized group tasked with investigating and countering the shadowy faction that sought to undermine the reawakening. The task force comprised individuals with unique skills and backgrounds, selected not only for their magical abilities, but also for their understanding of fey politics and community dynamics. Lena, Aiden, and Moira were integral to its formation, working alongside Moros, who brought his expertise in shadow magic and knowledge of the darker aspects of fey lore. The first priority for the task force was to gather intelligence and identify the leaders of the shadowy faction. This group had shown a capacity for sophisticated magical manipulation and a willingness to exploit fears and divisions within the Fey community. Understanding their motivations and goals was crucial for countering their influence. The task force established a base of operations in an ancient stone fortress located in a remote and neutral part of the Fey lands. The fortress, known as the Sentinel's Keep, was a place steeped in history and fortified by powerful wards that protected it from magical and physical threats. It provided a secure environment for planning and operations, as well as a symbol of the Council's commitment to the reawakening. As the task force began its work, they encountered a myriad of challenges. The shadowy faction operated in secrecy, using cloaked figures, false identities, and misdirection to cover their tracks. They were adept at blending into various communities, making it difficult to identify their true numbers or intentions. To penetrate these layers of secrecy, the task force employed a combination of magical surveillance, informant networks, and direct engagement with communities affected by the faction's activities. Moros and other shadow magic practitioners used their skills to counteract and neutralize the manipulative spells and enchantments used by the faction. One of the key breakthroughs came when the task force discovered a hidden cache of documents and magical artifacts linked to the shadowy faction. The documents revealed communications between faction members and outlined their plans to escalate tensions and sabotage key events related to the reawakening. The documents pointed to a central figure, known only by the alias Umbra, who appeared to be orchestrating the faction's activities. Umbra's writings suggested a deep-seated belief that the reawakening threatened the traditional order, and that only by resisting could the Fey preserve their true nature and independence. This revelation provided the task force with a clearer understanding of the faction's motivations. Umbra and their followers saw themselves as guardians of Fey traditions, resisting what they perceived as the homogenizing and potentially dangerous influences of the reawakening. They feared that increased interaction with humans and the blending of Fey traditions would erode the distinct identities and autonomy of Fey communities. Armed with this information, the task force devised a plan to expose and confront Umbra and their followers. They pe land to use the upcoming Festival of Lights, a major Fey celebration symbolizing hope, renewal, and the unity of light and darkness as an opportunity to engage with the faction and attempt to de-escalate the situation. The Festival of Lights was traditionally held in the Valley of Radiance, a place known for its natural beauty and powerful magical energies. The festival attracted Fae from all over, making it an ideal venue for the task force to disseminate information, rate to counteract the faction's influence, and reach a broad audience. 
As the festival approached, Lena and her team worked tirelessly to prepare. They coordinated with festival organizers to ensure that security measures were in place and that the event would proceed smoothly. They also reached out to community leaders, urging them to support a message of unity and inclusivity. On the night of the festival, the Valley of Radiance was illuminated by countless magical lights, creating a breathtaking spectacle. The atmosphere was one of celebration and hope, but beneath the surface, there was a palpable tension. The task force members, spread throughout the crowd, remained vigilant, ready to respond to any signs of trouble. As part of the festival's traditions, Lena was invited to give a speech, addressing the gathered Fae and sharing the council's vision for the reawakening. Standing on a raised platform, she looked out over the sea of faces, feeling the weight of their expectations and fears. Ladies and gentlemen, honored Fay, Lena began, her voice amplified by subtle magic. We gather here tonight to celebrate the Festival of Lights, a time of renewal and unity. This festival reminds us that light and darkness are both part of the same whole, each essential and valuable. So too is the diversity within our community, our traditions, our magic, our identities. She continued, addressing the concerns and fears that had been stirred by the shadowy faction. I understand that change can be frightening and that the path forward is uncertain. But the reawakening is not about erasing our differences. It is about embracing them. We seek a future where all Fae can coexist in harmony, where our diversity is our strength. As Lena spoke, she noticed a disturbance in the crowd, a ripple of movement and hushed whispers. Suddenly a figure stepped forward, cloaked in dark robes, their face obscured. It was clear to everyone present that this was a member of the shadowy faction, perhaps even Umbra themselves. The figure raised their hand, and the lights around them dimmed, casting long shadows across the valley. The crowd tensed, and Lena felt a surge of anxiety but remained calm. The figure's voice rang out, cold and challenging. You speak of unity and harmony, but what you truly seek is control. The reawakening threatens to destroy the very fabric of our society, to erase what makes us fey. We stand against this, not out of hatred, but out of love for our people and our traditions. Lena stepped forward, meeting the figure's gaze, though their face remained hidden. We do not seek to control or to destroy. We seek to build a future where all fey can thrive, where our traditions are honored and protected. This festival, this gathering, is proof that we can come together, that we can find common ground. The figure scoffed, their voice filled with bitterness. Words are easy, Catalyst, but the reality is more complex. The reawakening brings change, and with change comes the loss of what we hold dear. You ask us to trust in your vision, but why should we trust in a future we did not choose? At that moment, a group of Fey, including members of the task force, stepped forward. Moros, his presence commanding, address the figure directly. We all share a responsibility for the future of our people. The reawakening is not about one vision imposed on all, but a collective journey. You have concerns, valid ones, but we must find a way to address them, together, without resorting to fear and division. The crowd watched, a mix of fear and hope in their eyes. The figure hesitated, and for a moment, it seemed as though they might reach a peaceful resolution. But then, in a sudden burst of magic, the figure vanished, leaving behind a swirl of shadows that quickly dissipated in the light. The tension eased, but the encounter left a mark on everyone present. The task force had successfully prevented a potential conflict, but the presence of the shadowy faction at the festival was a stark reminder of the challenges they faced. In the aftermath, Lena and her team worked to reassure the Fey community, emphasizing the importance of unity and dialogue. The Festival of Lights continued, albeit under a more subdued atmosphere, with an emphasis on the need for understanding and cooperation. As the night drew to a close, Lena reflected on the day's events. The confrontation with the shadowy faction had revealed the depth of the divisions within the Fey community, but it had also shown the potential for dialogue and resolution. The task force's work was far from over, and the path to unity remained difficult and uncertain. Yet, Lena felt a renewed sense of determination. The reawakening was a process, one that required patience, empathy, and an unwavering commitment to the ideals of inclusivity and respect. The shadows of doubt and fear were real, 
but so too was the light of hope and possibility. The vision of a united Fey world, where all could find their place, was still within reach, and Lena, as the catalyst, was ready to continue leading her people toward that future, guided by a deep belief in the power of unity and the potential for transformation. The journey was far from over, but with each step, they moved closer to a brighter, more inclusive future for all Fey. The events at the Festival of Lights marked a significant moment in the reawakening. The appearance of the shadowy figure, possibly Umbra, and the public confrontation had brought the underlying tensions within the Fey community into sharp focus. Lena and the task force knew that while they had managed to prevent an immediate crisis, the root issues of fear, mistrust, and resistance remained unresolved. In the days following the festival, the Shadow Task Force intensified its efforts to track down Umbra and their followers. Using the intelligence gathered from the festival and other sources, they identified several locations where the shadowy faction might be operating. It became clear that Umbra's influence was more widespread than initially thought, with sympathizers in various Fey communities. One promising lead pointed to an ancient, abandoned stronghold known as the Obsidian Keep. Located deep within the mountainous region of the Fey Lands, the Obsidian Keep was a place steeped in legend and mystery. It was said to have once been a center of learning and magical study, but had been abandoned long ago due to unexplained events and growing fears about the nature of the magic practiced there. The task force decided to investigate the Obsidian Keep, suspecting it might be a base of operations for Umbra and their followers. Lena, Aiden, Moira, and Moros led a small contingent of skilled Fey, including members of the Council and other trusted allies. The journey to the keep was arduous, the terrain rugged and the air cold and thin. As they approached the Obsidian Keep, its dark, imposing structure loomed against the stark backdrop of the mountains. The keep was built from black stone, its walls adorned with faded carvings and symbols of ancient Fey lore. The atmosphere was heavy, with an eerie silence, broken only by the occasional gust of wind. The task force moved cautiously, aware that they were likely walking into a trap or ambush. The entrance to the keep was open, and the air inside was thick with the scent of dust and age. As they entered, the dim light revealed a grand hall, fill, led with broken furniture, decaying tapestries, and remnants of magical artifacts. Moros, attuned to the presence of shadow magic, led the way, he guided them through the hallways and chambers, noting the signs of recent activity, footprints in the dust, disturbed items, and faint traces of residual magic. It was clear that the keep was not as abandoned as it appeared. In the central chamber, they found what they were looking for. A group of cloaked figures stood in a circle, engaged in what appeared to be a ritual. At the center was Umbra, their presence unmistakable, surrounded by a swirling vortex of shadow magic. The task force moved quickly, forming a defensive line and preparing for a potential confrontation. Lena stepped forward, her voice echoing in the chamber. Umbra, it's over. We know who you are and what you've been doing. This is your chance to end this peacefully and to find a path forward together. Umbra turned, their face still hidden in shadow. Peace. There can be no peace when you seek to destroy what we hold dear. The reawakening is a lie a veneer of unity hiding the truth of control and assimilation. We stand for true Fey independence, for the preservation of our traditions against your misguided vision. Aiden, his voice steady and calm, responded. The reawakening is about embracing our diversity and finding strength in it. We do not seek to erase traditions, but to protect and honor them. Your actions, however, only sow discord and fear. Umbra raised a hand, and the vortex of shadow magic intensified. You cannot understand our fears, our desire to protect what is ours. You speak of unity, but you demand conformity. We will not yield to your vision. As the magic surged, Moro stepped forward, his voice resonant and authoritative. Umbra, enough. The shadows you wield are powerful, but they are not absolute. There is another way, one where we can coexist without destroying each other. Let go of this darkness and help us build a future where all Fae can thrive. For a moment, it seemed as though Umbra might listen. The magic around them flickered, the shadows wavering. But then, with a cry of defiance, Umbra released a burst of dark energy, aiming to disrupt the task force and make their escape. 
the task force responded quickly, using their combined magic to deflect the attack and protect themselves. Aiden and Moira worked together to create a barrier, while Lena and Moros focused on countering the shadow magic. The chamber filled with a cacophony of clashing energies, the air thick with tension. In the midst of the chaos, Lena saw an opportunity. She reached out with her magic, focusing on Umbra's energy, not to attack, but to connect. She sought to reach the person behind the shadows, to touch the core of their fear and anger. Umbra, please, Lena called out, her voice filled with compassion. We can find another way. You don't have to do this alone. We can work together, find solutions that respect everyone's needs and fears. You have a place in the reawakening, not as an enemy, but as a voice that matters. The chamber seemed to hold its breath, the clashing energies pausing for a heartbeat. Umbra hesitated, their figure wavering in the dim light. The shadows around them flickered, and for a brief moment, Lena thought she saw a glimpse of vulnerability, a hint of doubt. But then, with a final surge of defiance, Umbra broke free, casting a blinding spell that filled the chamber with light and shadow. When the light faded, Umbra and their followers were gone, leaving the task force standing amidst the aftermath of the confrontation. The silence that followed was heavy with unspoken words and unresolved emotions. The task force had averted disaster, but Umbra's escape left a bitter taste. The confrontation had not resolved the deeper issues, and the threat of the shadowy faction remained. As they regrouped and assessed the situation, Lena felt a mix of frust, ration and determination. The reawakening was a journey filled with challenges and setbacks, and today's events had shown just how deep the divisions ran. Yet she also felt a renewed sense of resolve. The encounter had revealed that even among the opposition, there were moments of doubt and potential for change. The task force returned to the Sentinel's Keep, where they reported their findings to the Hidden Council. The Council praised their efforts and emphasized the importance of continuing to engage with all Fae, including those who opposed the reawakening. The task force's work was far from over, but they had made progress in understanding the nature of the opposition and the fears driving it. Lena knew that the road ahead would be difficult, filled with challenges both seen and unseen. The vision of a united Fey world was still within reach, but it required a deep commitment to empathy, dialogue, and resilience. The shadows of doubt and division were real, but so too was the potential for healing and transformation. As the catalyst, Lena was more determined than ever to lead her people pool through these troubled times, guided by a vision of hope and unity. The reawakening was a journey of discovery, growth, and change, and they were committed to seeing it through, no matter the challenges that lay ahead. Together, they would continue to forge a path forward, one step at a time, toward a future where all Fae could find their place and thrive in harmony. The journey was far from over, but with each step, they moved closer to realizing the true potential of the reawakening, a world united in diversity and strength.